the need to awaken in this, and you will cause an awakening on various levels for your people. Amen. The title of this message today is Train Up Your Child. Most of you gathered here today are, shall I say, older folks. And perhaps you already have uh, raised uh, children. Uh, Martha and I have, but you know, we're, st we're grandparents and the job continues. Amen? Uh, ben and Melinda, you know what I'm talking about as well. We should all be vitally interested in not only about the past, but also in the future, especially the future, I would say, of our Adamic kindred. In all of my years, I have never met or heard of a parent who has been able to raise up a corrupt, free child. Have you? Any of you? All children have problems, doubts, questions, and to be more blunt again, they do have and carry with them sin in their life. So there's this corruptness, there's this sin that folks, parents, all of us need to understand, it starts out really right there in the cradle. That we have to be concerned, may I say, for their soul. We love them. We want the best for them, do we not? And so how are parents to be good parents? Well, in part, we're going to deal with that question in this message. And, of course, it is somewhat depressing to think about the fact that God created us and we come into this world and we have a sin nature, right? It, it, um, it, it does something, in a sense, to our faith. But that's why we have to have the right faith, or we will not be able to properly deal with the problem and the issues that, of course, parents are going to go through. I don't know about any of you watching on DVD right now or CD, how that you are uh, parents, grandparents, I don't know if you feel very successful at it. Right? How many of you, I don't need a show of hands, but would raise your hand and say, Pastor, that's me. I feel like I failed in this area and I failed in that area. And I, I, I just, I don't know if I was able to produce and, and do the right things that I'm, I'm called to do from God's Word. I don't like the words give up. Do any of you? None of us are quitters. And yet I've heard, sadly, from a number of parents over the years that they've thrown, thrown up their hands. They've given up. Well, that's not biblical. Are we to give up because we are sinners? We have sinned. We have fallen short of the glory of God. Let's just give up on ourselves. Well, the Word of God, if we'll read it and we'll understand it, should understand that there is great hope for us, even though we, we have sinned and fallen short of the glory of God. There's hope. Parents, there's hope. So I would say no. 
Not for one moment would we dare entertain such a thought that we're, we're supposed to, let's say, give up, throw on the towel, as in a sense some parents have done. And they're just kind of letting their children float along in the world here, do what they want to do. And parents just concern themselves with work. They concern themselves with um, the cares of this world and pretty much are ignoring their children. But no, that's not what God has called us to do at all. We are here to be, I'll use the biblical term, overcomers. We're supposed to be overcomers. And we're supposed to help our children overcome their problems and their difficulties. And that means to press forward, press forward in the faith, and make full proof of the things that God has called us to do. I can't think of a, probably, I can't think of a more important role than being a parent, a godly parent. Can you? It's vitally important that we strive to be godly parents. It's an office. People talk about uh, a, a position in government and uh, a, a position that a person may have on a job or wherever out there. Well, as far as I'm concerned, the highest calling is to be a parent, a godly parent. And that means that you're going to have to be a judge. You're going to have to be king in your house. Now, we're not moving Christ out of that position, but God has appointed us. Parents, he's appointed you. Fathers, he's appointed you to be head of that house. And mothers, you have a vital role to play also to help me with your husband in being godly parents. Amen? And you're supposed to be judge. May I say jury? And uh, you are supposed to um, carry out righteous laws or righteous principles that give righteous principles to your children and to live that away. We'll get into that as we go on here. But there's a, a very important scripture verse I want to share with you to uh, begin this message. It's found in Proverbs 22 and verse 6. Proverbs 22 and verse 6, quote, Train up a child in the way he should go. Even when he is old, he will not depart from it. What a verse. This is deep spiritual meat, actually, in what we're reading here from God's Word about train up your child. And it is true, however, this, this term, train up a child, uh, needs deeper explanation for all of us to understand. And I'm not so sure we're going to even do it justice per se, but we're going to give a stab at it this morning or a, a put our right foot forward on it to help us gain, especially you parents, to gain understanding in what this verse really means. You see, to train up is more than telling them or reading to your children or even sheltering them from this world. Those are important things. I mean, we do have to uh, teach them. We do have to, and that involves reading to them, and we do have to shelter them. But let's try to gain, again, a deeper understanding of what that means. To train up biblically, it means, is from what I can determine so far, it means make their Christian education sure. Make their Christian education sure. So yes, train them, as the scriptures tell us, 
Spend every day that you can training them to know the ways and the principles of the Scriptures. You are to, and obviously, parents, you're with your children every day. It doesn't take you long to find out. You've got to keep your eye on that child or your children all the time. I remember years ago when uh, things got quiet in the house, and all of a sudden I felt like the Spirit's telling me, Dave, get up and check on your children. And I came downstairs, and I found my son Patrick with scissors in his hand, and there's electric wire plugged into the wall there. He's getting ready to cut that. <laughs> now, there is no doubt in my mind that the Holy Spirit was there to help me and to let me know. You'd be surprised how many times as a parent, and mom too, you can, you can uh, testify to the fact that when you don't hear something, that's the time that there's probably something not good going on in the house. So parenting is a everyday uh, job, I guess, maybe except for when you're asleep, but even then I'm not so sure you're not parenting when you're supposed to go to bed and supposed to be asleep. You're, you kind of, there's always an air of what's going on uh, at times, even when you're asleep. But we have to give our children biblical purpose and understanding. Now, these may sound like um, obvious things, but it's extremely important because uh, as a grandparent, not even just with my own uh, grandch grandchildren, but our people, our uh, race, and uh, we, there's a number of families out there that you do have children, and you're going through those struggles of raising your children, how to be godly parents, how to make the right decision, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. But I look out there in the world, and I see how a number of these children and young people are acting and behaving, and I'm worried. I'm worried about the influence very, the worldly influence that is upon them. Now, things haven't changed much. When you were young, don't you know that your parents were concerned about you? And they were concerned about worldly influence. Now, we could say, yes, but it's gotten worse. And I would say, I'm, I'm in agreement with that. I think things have gotten worse. But there's this basic sin nature still. Didn't you have it? Nobody wants to talk about that. Didn't you do things you shouldn't have done? Weren't you involved in things uh, at school and with your friends after school that you shouldn't have been involved in? Perhaps some of you would say, no, I, I went to school, I came home, and everything was fine, you know, and, and, uh, and my parents and I got along great. We didn't have any arguments. We saw eye to eye. I didn't have to deceive my parents about anything. Anytime I wanted to go somewhere, I told them. Anytime my friends came around, you know, they were good friends, they were godly friends. Well, I, I'm, I'm happy for you. But uh, when I look back on my childhood and I look back on the things that I did, you know, as shocking as this may be, you know, you, it's going to be hard for you to believe this about Pastor Barley, but I lied to my parents on a number of cases. I wanted to go be with my friends, especially when there was a, a young person and they wanted to go to a party. I wanted to go with them. I wanted to be at that party. I had no idea what I was getting involved in. I, know, I didn't really know what kind of people were going to be at that party, what influences were going to be there, but I wanted to be there. And a lot of times when the bad guys, my bad people, bad friends, we could say... Uh, at, at school were doing things, well, it didn't take a whole lot to, to uh, convince Dave here that, hey, you should be involved in those things too. Sounds like fun. 
Uh, again, if that doesn't apply to you, well, I'm happy. And you're, and you're blessed for that. But I have found uh, that um, uh, oftentimes when my parents, I'm reflecting back when my parents would say, don't do certain things, don't go certain things. And when I, and, and when I leave, like uh, that my parents leave in the car and they go for an hour, don't you go out of the house, don't you go anywhere, you know, you stay right here in this house while, while we're gone. Well, it didn't, if a friend would come by or something like that, want me to come out, guess where I would go? I would go out in the outside and do certain things. I'll never forget one day, and I probably told you all this before, but I'll say it again. Well, I was, um, uh, my, my um, parents were gone, but my dad's car was in the garage. And a friend, of, a couple of friends of mine came over and, we were messing around, and we were only about 12 years old. We came up with a brilliant idea that wouldn't it be neat if we could move my car, my dad's car, out of the driveway, and we could uh, show how tough we were, and uh, and uh, we just were enthralled with that idea of being able to move my car, dad's car out of the driveway. So we figured, okay, let's put, turn the key on and, and uh, let's uh, uh, grab it and we'll all get behind the hood of the car, the front part, and we'll just start pushing with all of our might. And doggone it, the car started moving. And next thing you know, Lo and behold, that car is going down, uh, down into the street, and, and we couldn't stop it, and bang, it hits the curb, it bounces forward, and my dad's car is there blocking the whole road. So, do you think the, the fear, we'll even say of God, but i tell you right now, it was fear of my dad, what is going to happen to me when my dad comes home soon and sees that car blocking the way and all the commotion that's going on there? But that's just a little example, isn't it? Do, do, I'm sure you all have your examples back when you were young of things that you did and uh, that you're not too proud of. And there are more things that I'm not proud of that I'm not, I'm not mentioning, by the way, but uh, again, we all have our stories. But let's not dwell on that. Let's dwell on the solution. Is there a biblical solution? For instance, this verse that we read here in Proverbs 22, verse 6. Train up a child in the way he should go, and even when he is old, he will not depart from it. Does anyone here think that you can just train up a child and there will not be any problems? That uh, he'll stay, you'll, you'll correct him, you'll give him godly advice, you'll, you'll do the godly thing, and he'll stay, or she'll stay, a godly child un, until they're old and die and pass on. Does anybody really think that or believe that? Well, I don't believe that's what this verse is telling us. Now, we could read that into it. But I, I think this verse is telling us that there needs to be good training or even serious training that we use to raise our children. But how do we get that? How do we know what that is? Well, it's a tough thing, but we need spiritual insight and understanding. We need the Holy Spirit involved in how we're going to raise our children. If you're not praying for your children, parents, and grandparents, you're not praying for your uh, grandchildren or, or children, you've got a problem. You're not doing the right spiritual thing here. So training also involves praying, does it not? Yes, it does. But we have to explain to them, our children, parents, I'm talking to you, what their biblical duties are. But we also have to explain to them 
And this is where a lot of parents, I think, miss the boat in some cases. Their biblical identity. Yes, they have a biblical identity. What does that biblical identity mean? What should it mean to our children? And they, So they need to understand what their covenant identity is and purpose. Do you think that would make a serious dent into their biblical understanding? I do. And I think a lot of parents are failing in that area to let them know you are of the seed of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. And here's what, in a sense, what we could say, here's what God did with Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, and here's what God can do with you. Here are his And just read to them the stories of Joseph, how God delivered Joseph from that pit, right? And God performed miracles in his life. What God did for Abraham, what God did for Isaac and Jacob and and those stories. How God spoke to Samuel when he was a little boy. God spoke to Samuel. Don't you think that will have a powerful impact upon your children, and just keep going through in, up until even when Jesus said, let the children come forth. He wanted to embrace them. He wanted to be with them. But to give them this biblical understanding of who they are. Now, every I'm moving rather rapidly here, but a lot of people would stop right there and say, oh, that's good. That's, that's wonderful. But you know what you also have to teach your children? Is that they are, you're giving them this biblical understanding of who they are. But you know what? It's, people are going to hate you. They aren't going to go along with who you are in life. The things that I'm teaching you now. Johnny, Sally, Eddie, whoever you, whatever this child's, the children's names are, they're not going to agree. And they're not going to like your biblical understanding. And they're going to, one day you will find out, if not when you're very young, you're, you're going to find out that they hate you. I told this story way many years ago of this uh, Mexican teenager and uh, he and I did not always get along. He was about five years older than me and I was but a little boy at this time and he was coming after me in the woods and I climbed up this tree and he just started throwing rocks at me and making fun of me. And I remember on that tree, clinging to the limbs and praying, Jesus help me. And you know, I prayed out loud, Jesus help me, deliver me from this uh, person who's throwing rocks at me. And I just prayed, and the more, and the more he'd throw things at me, I would pray the louder, and, f- and finally he just quit and he took off. I don't really know why, but he took off. He especially didn't like the fact that I was praying. That seemed to anger him even more that I was praying. And I always believed that God answered my prayers. But it, it was an awakening call for me that, in a sense, wow, there's people out there that don't like you, Jesus. And also... There's people that don't like me, Jesus, because I love you. And I want to be a good Christian boy. And I want to um, make you happy, Jesus. Now, I wasn't taught my identity. And I wasn't taught a lot of things about God's covenants and God's purposes and God's promises. I tend to think 
This is not the only thing. But I tend to think and believe that if my parents would have sat me down and kept explaining to me through the word that I was an Israelite and how I can and should be able to identify with Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. They're your brethren. And given me this, again, this biblical understanding about the covenants and promises of God, I think it would have made a tremendous difference in my life. It's a big impact upon my training. And why we need to have also the right biblical foundation and how to rightly use and apply the things of God. They're all connected, interconnected, the things that I've been sharing with you so far. And that no one will ever be able to love you. Children, no one's going to love you more. Young people, no one's going to love you more than your parents. And that needs to be also taught from a very young age. And of course, parents, when they have babies, they love their babies. They're kissing them all the time. Grandparents are over there kiss them all the time. I know because I can't wait for the service to end. So I was invited over to Patrick and Amanda's house, my son's house, and they have two little babies. I can't wait to go over there and hug them and kiss them. But it's important that we tell them and we let them know that we love them. We are vitally interested in them. We're vitally interested in their future. And the things that we do, if we're doing the right things biblically, will demonstrate that to them in a very and uh, message. It'll build love in them for you, a greater love, a greater understanding. I did my best to do a lot of these things as a parent, but I failed in some areas. One thing I had to learn the hard way, and I'm going to tell you, and I'm sure most of you already know that, is do not let your failures dictate to you that you are just a failure and there's nothing you can do. Right? I mean, some parents do feel like they have uh, failed. And uh, as far as I'm concerned, you could be 100 years old and you could have children that are 75 years old you're still their parent, in a sense. I'm using that as an extreme example. But on with my children, I tried to do my best to let them know that I love them. And there are some important ways we can show that. Here's a quote for you to uh, think about. It's from Benjamin Franklin. He said, quote, Tell me, and I forget. Teach me, and I may remember. Involve me, and I learn. I'm going to repeat that. Tell me, and I forget. Teach me, and I may remember. Involve me, and I learn. Involve me. So, yes, what the scriptures are telling us here, and, and when it says train them, we are to train them, but this really means involve them. Are we involving our children in the things of God? Or are we just reading to them? See, involving is, means that it's a concept of ongoing. It's something that we do throughout our life. Uh, I remember looking back on my grandparents with me, and many a times my grandparents would uh, take me to church, but they would also explain to me what was said in church, and they would involve me by also reading to me uh, 
they would have me over to the house many times. I spent the night at my grandparents, and they would read the scriptures to me and share the stories of the Bible with me. They involved me in the faith. But we can do that by our actions and our behaviors in lots of different ways. How we treat one another, how we speak to one another. Our children are all the time watching us, right? All the time watching us. What do they see? What does our life tell them about our faith? So, what Benjamin Franklin said is vitally important, and it means to get our children into a re routine of a carefully, carefully sheltered and filtered way of life. Now, I know a lot of you are listening right now and thinking, well, man, sheltered and... I'm not going to put the squeeze on my children. Let's think about it. Don't, don't rush into uh, that you fully understand what I'm saying here until you hear the matter out. But I said filtered. And I think that's what we do need to do. Parents, we need to filter out the things that our children see, what they hear, and what they experience, especially when they are young. When they are young, they are mostly free of worldliness and corruption, are they not? Pretty much. They stay at home with you, and all pretty much what they see is mom and dad and family. And once in a while, you know, they can remember getting in their... Uh, Maybe getting in the car seat or sitting in the back or sitting in the car, going to the store with mom and dad, things like that. Parents, you only, though, have a short opportunity to do this, to shelter your children or to filter a lot of things that they're going to hear and see and experience. And yes, let's be realistic. They will hear things as they're growing up, and they will see things that they, you wouldn't like for them to hear or see. That's just a reality. This is why every day with your children is to be a training day. I'm, I'm, I'm repeating this over and over because I do want us to think in a deeper way about what this means. Do the best you can every day, then, to explain to them why certain things are wrong and bad, not, not only for them, but also show them how these things are detrimental to society. Let them know that there is a difference between the world's values and God's values, and that if they do, if they live according to or embrace world, worldly values, these things are going to happen to them. They're going to experience these things. And also let them know that it's going to get harder the older they get. And it's going to get tougher to make the right decisions because there's going to be all these pressures from their friends and the world upon them. Things are going to see Amen? It's going to get real tough for them. And so they need to have the right stuff. And that means the right spiritual stuff. They need to learn how to pray. So you need to work with your children in teaching them at a young age how to pray. They need to see you pray. They need to know what God's values are. So share with them what the scriptures say concerning uh you know, the Bible word. I'm going to say the Bible word because it's not just learning God's laws. That's also a part of it. And the Ten Commandments, that's certainly a part of it. But it's learning what spiritual righteous values are and that's all throughout the Word of God. Show them how the apostles dealt with things. Show them the way that the prophets dealt with things. Show them the way Abraham and Isaac dealt with things. And they weren't always right, right? 
They made mistakes in judgment. But God used their mistakes to show them, you know, the right way, to show them the right things to do. Now this subject matter, again, is a tough one. Because, well, people don't want to do it. And I, I've, I've, I'm saying this from experience, talking with um, a number of young people, and the reason I'm saying that is because they will hear this type of a message, they will have an understanding, or think they do, of these things, and yet they don't live it in their home. And they wonder, when the children grow up, why there are all these problems. Your children will not grow up perfectly just because, oh, let's say you spend um, one day a week sharing with them the scriptures, or one day, one day a week taking them to church. I know of a lot of parents in the past that that was their idea of Christianity was to take their children to church and drop them off and pick them up later. What kind of a message is that showing your children, first of all? Amen? What kind of a message is that showing your children? They watch you. They learn from that. And what message are you sending them? You're saying, well, it must be that's the way it is. That's the way my parents live. They don't care about coming to church. They don't ever read the scriptures to me. They don't pray, pray with me ever. It's always going from one world event to another world event to another world event and sending them to the public school system and turning them over to the public school system, things like that. Here is a very, also, a very vital principle that children need to learn. And all we can do is, have we have so much time in this message to preach these things and share these things, but it's the principle of separation. That separation is not bad. How do you think most children are, what, in what way are they taught about this, maybe the principle of separation? You see, we need to let our children know that there is a difference between, again, the world's values and God's values. And that they do need to, in one way that they can deal with the world problems that they're going to encounter, is to separate come out from those things to separate oneself is a vital way of protecting oneself to separate parents quote to their children the scriptures on separation and why do you do that so they will know what the Word of God says, that the Word of God backs that up. It's not just a thought that's coming from you. As an example, I'd have you turn to 2 Corinthians 6 and verse 16. So any of you know why this is such a vital, vitally important principle? They need to know that everyone, the people that they meet out there, oftentimes, they're not going to be what, they, what people call brothers and sisters to them. They're not going to be real friends. Verse 16, And what agreement hath the temple of God with idols? For ye are the temple of the living God. As God hath said, I will dwell in them and walk in them, and I will be their God, and they shall be my people. Wherefore, come out from among them, and be ye separate, saith the Lord. God's saying this. Let your children know that. Touch not the unclean thing, and I will receive you, and will be a father unto you, and ye shall be my sons and daughters, saith the Lord Almighty. First of all, I like this last verse, don't you? It says, 
if ye do these things, if ye separate and touch not the unclean thing, I will receive you. Parents, use these verses to share with your children why they need to stay away from unclean things. And that mommy and daddy, we also, children, have to do this in our life. And here are some of the bad things that can happen and will happen to us if we don't do this, children and young people. They have to separate from the unclean things of this world. And the Word says, I, again, and I will receive you. That God gives His Word, and He instructs us, instructs us in His Word because He loves us. Parents, we love you, speaking to your children. Also, God doesn't want us to hang around, as we're reading these verses, unclean and disobedient people. The covenants and the promises of God are meant to bring His people, and you are a child of God. Bring His people back into Him that we might have true unity and harmony with God to be one with His purposes. That's why, parents, you should frequently, again, teach your children principles of God's laws and help them reason through the Word and why they can trust God in what the Word declares. And why? Well, again, verse 18 says, God Almighty will be a father unto you. The idea of family is brought forth here. And ye shall be my sons and daughters, saith the Lord. God, through His Word, keeps His family, His Adamic Israel covenant family together. Parents, I think you can gather from what we just read here that God leads by example. And you are also to do the same. Now, we're just given some basic concepts, reality, on how to be good parents and what God requires of us, how to train up your children. There's so much that when you go through the Bible, God's Word unfolds for us. And there are things, there are a lot of things we can do if we will apply God's Word. And we, meaning parents, pray for yourselves. I've left out a lot in this message, but one thing I can guarantee you is where Pastor Barley has been inadequate in explaining some of these principles to you, the Holy Spirit will not. If you'll pray to Him, if you'll lean not to your own understanding, you'll follow the Scriptures, God will bless you with amazing truth and insight and understanding. And your children will grow up to be godly parents someday. Yes, they'll have their struggles. You know that. We all know that. But God, we need to teach them the Holy Spirit, the Lord Jesus Christ, will be there with them. Give them that understanding. Now, if they're not reading His Word, if they're not applying His Word, they're not going to feel His presence. We want children, we want you to feel the presence of the Lord. And this is why we, children, your parents, believe like we do. We go to church. This is why we read the Word of God. This is why we pray. This is why we uh, believe in the church, to edify one another. And we come to church to get this, um, these things of God that are promised to us in His Word if we will abide in His Word and in His promises. Amen. Lord Jesus, we pray right now for this Word. We pray for our children. We pray that your Holy Spirit will help our people. Give them understanding. Give them spiritual strength. 
give them biblical know-how on how to be godly parents and that they can reach out in a spiritual way and that we, all of us, the body of Christ, need to pray for our people. We need to pray for our children. And we need to be there as examples also to encourage them and help them in growing steadfast in the things of God. Amen.